CataractCoach.com, doing both cataract and retina surgery. So can a vitreoidal surgeon be a great cataract surgeon also? The videos here sent in by an anonymous vitreoretinal surgeon, and this surgeon asks, is it okay for me to do both of these surgeries? And the answer is, of course, whatever you are comfortable with, whatever is in your wheelhouse, whatever your expertise is, you should be able to practice the full extent of it. You know, some of my favorite cataract surgeons are also amazing vitreoretinal surgeons. You watch Dr. Lukan Mishev, and he operates he does beautiful retina surgery and cataract surgery and glaucoma surgery. An incredible surgeon. In my hands, I do zero vitreoretinal surgery. That's not my cup of tea. And unfortunately, I'm in a big city like Los Angeles where I can refer it out. But the question is, are there political issues as well that are preventing you from doing that? And I really don't think it's too much of an issue, to be frank. If you're doing a beautiful cataract surgery, you're just helping the patient. And now we can watch this vitreoretinal surgeon in action, and it's going to be a pretty good surgery. It's two times normal speed, so the total surgical time um, for the case was about 11 minutes. We'll show you to you about five and a half minutes. And the case just goes beautifully, very routine, very uneventful, and great hands. You know, if you can peel the internal limiting membrane, I bet you could probably learn how to do a capsular axis too. Just not that difficult in comparison. They're about the same. So using your hands under the microscope, intraocularly, whether it's cataract or retina surgery, whatever your training is, you should be able to do. Whether, whether there are political issues or in your, in your community, that you'll have to figure out on your own. But certainly, if you are comfortable doing this, you should definitely do it. Now let's watch this technique. So let's get the politics out of the way. And the technique here is very nice. I like the chop technique, little vertical chop there, taking out the quadrants. And just going beautifully. There's even an advantage. Let's say you do both cataract and vitreoretinal surgery. If you have a patient who needs a combination procedure, it may be a lot easier for you. You may be able to do it all in one sitting. So in my practice, if a patient needs both retina and cataract surgery, it depends on what the degree of cataract is. If it's a pretty dense cataract, I'll do the cataract surgery first. Let the patient heal up a little bit. And then the vitreoretinal surgeon can do the posterior segment procedure here. And another good advantage, if you are both a cataract and a retina surgeon, if you do drop the nucleus, well, you can pick it up yourself right there on the same, same case, right there on the OR table, easy enough. So nice technique here. What would I do differently? Let's talk about a couple things here, such as if you are doing a combined retina and cataract case, anything you do differently? Well, one, I'd make sure you have a great incision like this one that's not going to open up during the case. I'd also make sure that you suture the incision at the end of the case. So when you're putting your trocars in for your retina surgery, or if you have to do any extra manipulation, trying to get at that vitreous base or visualize the aura, that you are not going to gape the incision. So I'd put a 10 nylon suture to suture the main incision. I'd also, if you're going to do a combined retina cataract case, I would also encourage you to make the rexus a little on the smaller side. Not a baby rexus, but let's say maybe a 4.5 to 5 millimeter rexus. And that way, even if there is extra manipulation or you end up putting a gas bubble in the vitreous cavity, you're not going to inadvertently displace or push the IOL optic out of the capsule bag. You'll keep it captured. So maybe I'd aim for like a four and a half millimeter rexus. And then obviously, I would uh, choose a monofocal lens. If you've got some sort of retinal pathology, you're probably going to be best off, especially if it's macular pathology, with a monofocal lens. So putting a monofocal lens is probably the best choice in those eyes. And then... Um, the case should proceed pretty much normally. For lens calcs, I tend to choose a slightly higher IOL power, maybe by a half diopter, just because in the absence of vitreous, in the absence of an anterior hyaloid face, that IOL may sit a little deeper in the eye, and you'll be a little bit happier with a slightly higher IOL power in that regard. Here's the end of this case. That's usually a single piece of acrylic lens going in the capsule bag. Looks great, removing viscoelastic. And I encourage you, keep up the cataract surgery work. You've got good hands. You'll do a beautiful job. And this patient will certainly benefit from that. So operate to your heart's content and to the full spectrum of your abilities. And don't be shy about learning new things. One challenge you may have, though, is sometimes it's tough to keep up with all the new developments in both subspecialties. If you're doing cataract surgery and you're doing retina surgery, keeping up with both is sometimes a bit of a challenge. Thanks for watching.